everybody. I'm Tom Barnes. This is the 78 Podcast, the extension of the Stories from the 78 website. I appreciate you coming by and taking a listen or watching or go to the website. I appreciate all of it. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing to that YouTube channel of mine, that would be amazing because that's how I can pay some of these bills. Uh, but not, none of that. Uh, I wanted to talk this week about uh, a couple things really quickly. What a, a story I posted on the website was a, a story over at um, the Punchbowl Social. Cool place in the West Loop and a uh, place if you were like looking for things to do with your friends this week, I would highly recommend that place just because you can meet with a bunch of people, have some great cocktails, hang out and do the whole thing. Uh, I was up in Wisconsin, though. This is one of the fun things I want to talk about. Yeah, I love going to Wisconsin in the summertime, especially if being from Chicago, just because it's like this rite of passage of summer when you live here to get out and go to Wisconsin and uh, Lake Geneva, one of those places that you go. And some people might roll their eyes when they hear Lake Geneva just because it's so in fashion to go, you know, like you go to Lake Geneva, man. Uh, but it's great. I love the Northwoods, too. But Lake Geneva has a very unique way of delivering the mail. And when I mean unique, I mean, Pete, they're called mail boat jumpers and did a story uh, about these mail boat jumpers that has that they are summer jobs every year. And the people that have houses on actual Lake Geneva, which is a massive lake, by the way, they have mail boat jumpers. So we're, you know, they'll like put these little tours together to tour Lake Geneva. And it's also a way for these mail boat jumpers to do them to deliver the mail for the day. And uh, it's pretty cool. I got to say, to see it in action, you think it's a lot harder than you probably think it is because these kids, you know, and you have to be able to run because there's a lot of running involved. So you're on these boats, these tour boats. You get up to a dock. You have the mail that's being delivered. And then you have to get to pick up the mail that needs to be picked up. So what they do is they have the boats going. The boats don't slow down. The boats are going. These kids jump off the dock while the boat's going, run get the mail, kiss the goose, because they have the gooses. That's like a thing. It's been around for 108 years they've been delivering mail like this. They kiss the goose, grab the mail, and run back on the boat. And if you miss the boat, you miss the boat. Then you have to walk or run and catch up to the next one. And uh, that's part of the whole shtick of the whole thing. It's been going on for 108 years. It's a really cool thing to see happen. And you'll see these guys running from uh, when there's not available, when you can't find a dock, or if there's not a dock, they'll run like a half a mile to get other mail and then they get back up on to the uh, boat itself. So it's a fun little story. It's on stories from the 78.com. I'll give you the name. It's called Wisconsin teens compete for covered mail boat jumpers job on Lake Geneva. So pretty self-explanatory. I have a friend of mine. Her name is Laura and she writes for the site as well. She wrote this amazing story about a bar called electric funeral at the electric funeral bar. Now, if you're an Aussie fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? But it's a bar in Bridgeport. If you're not familiar with Bridgeport, Bridgeport, it's Bridgeport, you know, like it's the where the White Sox play for now. And uh, it's been the South Side neighborhood of Irish. And now it's mixed because it was originally an Irish neighbor. It's where the Daly family's from and what have you. And uh, it's right by Chinatown downtown. But this bar, particularly it's on Halstead Street, which kind of runs through the heart of Bridgeport is an old neighborhood bar that somebody bought and kind of redid and brought it back to life. And I think it's probably got the best name of any bar in the city. I mean, the electric funeral bar in Bridgeport. Uh, and it's everything that is uniquely uh, heavy metal and punk with a sense of goth. Ah, oh, I love it. And she wrote this great article about it. So do me a favor, just go over and check out her article itself because it's all things Aussie and uh, I, I don't know, it's goth. It's, it's great neighborhood bar. It's a great example of how Chicago does neighborhood bars. She runs through the list of things that you can order uh, and the foods they have canned cocktails like seltzers and stuff like that. Uh, but they have fun names like the last responder, which I think is kind of hilarious. Um, but that's over at the stories from the 78 website along with uh, a great story about this place called local good Chicago so if you like make something, you know, like make jewelry, artwork, uh, you know, uh, some kind of uh, woodworking stuff, Local Good Chicago, or if you're an artist or a writer that's writing about Chicago, Local Good Chicago is a place that you want to know because they'll sell your stuff. It's like kind of, you know, like you can buy like a little part of the store and sell your stuff. And the woman that runs the place is great. Uh, Lauren, she's a, you know, an, a North Side woman. She works for a really cool company. This is kind of like her side hustle, uh, but it's a great area if you've never been up to edgebrook you can take the train up to edgebrook it's got its own stop 
it's like right before Niles. Um, but they have a really great area of uh, a spot there where it showcases some of the best of Chicago artists. And so highly recommend that. And the other story I posted was about the hearse hardcore funeral club, or I should say the hardcore hearse club. And it's this club of people that love hearses and they drive around and they're in part of parades. And before they, when they first started, they were ostracized. People were scared of them. They didn't want to do it. Now, um, people are starting to dig the hearses, like car shows and stuff like that. And Mark, uh, Thomas over at the alley, wanted them part of his block party. So they were there and that's where I met them. So I thought I'd do a story about them. So I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. They've been around since 2013 and uh, a lot of fun and uh, very unique Chicago's type story. So that I am also a producer for CBS here in Chicago. And I was a producer at WGN TV for like about 15 years and WGN, uh, you know, it's the moniker Chicago's very own. And I remember years ago, the place felt like it was disjointed. Like I felt like we weren't, um, all, we were siloed. You know what I mean? And I thought, you know what? I think we should do something fun, not only for us, but something that makes us look good to our to the city of Chicago. So I pitched my boss Jen, and I said, you know, we should. What's more Chicago than a block party? And she's like, I love that idea. How do you want to do the block party? So I said, well, we should do this, put it on a street. It'll be great. And she's like, okay, go figure it out. Then I realized I didn't know how to throw a block party. So I had to like teach myself how to like do a block party. I had to ask our uh, stagehand, head stagehand, his name was Rick Nosick. And Rick was a retired fire chief for, mm, I forgot the name of the town he was in. It was right by, the, right by O'Hare. But Rick is amazing wealth of knowledge and he got us you know with the fire marshal we had to get generators we had to get permits we had to get all these things and it was great it was a lot of fun and the first one we did at gn was probably you know we probably had like 600 people there or so the last one we did at wgn this was in 2019 in naperville so we did geneva we did park ridge and then we did homewood flossmore which was also great and a lot of people but naperville blew it out of the park. We had over 10,000 people come to this block party in downtown Naperville. It was outstanding. And it showcased the city and all of them all showcased like what made that town so unique. Like, so for instance, in Park Ridge, it talked about how Harrison Ford was from Park Ridge. Hillary Clinton was from Park, Park Ridge. The first Mustang ever sold were sold to people that live in Park Ridge and the Boy Scouts of America, they, we, you know, for good, bad, or ugly at this point, what we heard about the Boy Scouts started in good faith and for good reasons in Park Ridge. I just thought it was the first Boy Scout troop in Park Ridge. So, you know, we did that for Homewood Flossmore, about people from there. And Naperville did the same thing. And Naperville's got a lot of stories. And for a long time, Naperville was kind of its own thing. It really wasn't a suburb of Chicago until perhaps, you know, like as Chicago grew, they grew together. And Naperville, I believe, is the second largest city in Illinois outside of Chicago. So we did... A block party there and it was great we had like lovely the band the strombellas played we had a marching band we had a parade we had the whole thing dunk tanks face painters the whole thing so i thought now that i'm at cbs we should do something like that wg is not doing them anymore for one reason or another so i said and it was my idea so i'm taking it and uh i was like we can do this at cbs and cbs hasn't done stuff like this but they want to and that's part of the reason why i'm there because they want to get back into the community and do community-based things. So I pitched my boss this, and she's like, well, I don't know if we're ready, but I know you, so okay, go for it. Let's see what we can do. So I had to figure out a way to do it differently, because WGN it was just a whole other circumstances that were different than CBS, and nothing good or bad. It's just different, right? But I did. I figured it out, and I worked with this amazing, amazing woman. Her name is Bonnie Pear, and I can't say enough nice things about Bonnie. She works for a company a PR company. Actually, I don't even know if it's called a PR company anymore. It's marketing, PR. They have expanded. It's called Motion uh, Motion Agency now. So maybe it's an agency. It probably is the proper name of it. But Bonnie Pear is an amazing woman. And she does some of she does the PR for the peer through the company Motion. So I worked with her to get this party at the pier off the ground. And boy, oh boy, did we ever. It was a great time. We had so many fun activities along Navy Pier. And the reason why we picked the pier is because the pier is the people's pier. That's what it was built for. That's the its moniker. It's the people's pier of Chicago. And they have so many free activities on the pier. A lot of people don't know about all the free things on the pier. Now, 
I know you grow up in Chicago. You're like, oh, the last thing I want to do is go to Navy Pier because when we grew up, Navy Pier was very like Mick Pier. You know what I mean? Like there was a McDonald's, there was like maybe a Maggiano's back in the day there. They had the IMAX theater, and that was kind of it. There wasn't a whole lot of going on at Navy Pier, but it was a fun new shiny toy for Chicago for years and years and years. And a lot of people don't realize that it's been completely renovated. There's a hotel, the Sable Hotel, at the end of the pier that is like, I mean, a top-notch hotel that makes you feel like you're on a cruise ship because it's out on the water, almost a mile out on the water. And then you have art galleries. You have Flyover Chicago Experience. You have all these things happening at the pier and a lot of it's free. I mean, the flyover is not free, but like just to walk on the pier is free and you can take a boat ride, which is not free, but they're like, they have music, they have, uh, these little fun activities. The art gallery is free. You know, you can go in and cool off in the food court that has some of the best food in Chicago. So that's why I wanted to do it there. Cause it's the people's pier and you got all the public transportation that can get there and the whole thing. So that's what we did. We went down to the pier and we had bounce houses from bounce house or us. Thank you, Jim, very much. Um, if you want any kind of bounce house that you want in the Chicago area, go to bounce house R us. They are the premier <laughs> bounce house place and they're fair and they're good people. And that's why I would send you there because they're good people that own it and they're great to work with. And Jim, and, and I also got to say thank you to Navy pier for letting us set up because this is something they haven't done with us ever. So they don't know me. They know me from doing stuff with WGN and recently at Navy pier, but they let us like set up and broadcast live on the pier. So right at the, the entrance there with a big fountain, with the water spraying up and all the kids. Um, that's where we had the bounce houses. So, and it was about 90 degrees by the time things got rolling. So it was hot all the way down to the beer garden, back and forth. We went on a boat. We heard of Chicago shakes theater, uh, theater coming out and doing performances. We had the dance partners of Navy pier come out and do like there was break dancing. There was, Mexican folk music. There was a gospel choir. There were all these things that I was so proud to be part of. And I was so happy that I can bring that to the staff at CBS because they haven't done stuff like that before. And I just thought it would be really cool for us to do as staff to bring us together, to show that we can do this, that there, there's not only one station that can do those type of events in the city. You just need to have uh, a little, um, a little faith that you can do it yourself. And that's what we did. And we did great. And our photogs, and when I mean photographs and photographers, the video journalists that are shooting all the video were awesome. And they hustled and they got to one spot there because, by the way, Navy Pier is a mile long. So there were times where we had a walk from one end to the other, basically. So you're maybe seven eighths of a mile. You're walking. And uh, they did it. And they did it from 5 a.m. to 1130 a.m. Nonstop. And when I was at WGN, it was six to nine, six to ten, you know, like the six, seven, eight and nine o'clock hour. So this was longer. And then we did it again in the afternoon, starting at four to six 30. So it was a great time. I was so proud to be a part of it, to show off our city. Cause that's what I want. I just want people to love our city. And that's why I do this podcast. That's why I do the website, because I think for all the crap out there about how Chicago is this or that, it's also great. It's great because of people like Jim who owns the bounce house place or my friend, Amory Saviano, who wrote a great essay about the Chicago accent and what it really means. It's not about those guys down there talking like this. It's more about those people who talk like that or talk like me are your neighbors and your friends. And we all like love our city. We all want it to do well. And there are people here who are doing great things here and showing off the best of our city. And just like any other city, we got our problems, no doubt. But there is so much good and so much came out of the city and still comes out of the city that I just basically want to tell the people who are negative about our city to stick it where the sun don't shine because you got stuff like the party at the pier or the magic lounge or the electric funeral bar in Bridgeport or the hundreds of other stories that I have on this website and this podcast I tell you about now weekly. That's reason why to give Chicago a chance and check us out. And I will continue to do this until I deem otherwise. So I appreciate you watching and listening and subscribing to the YouTube channel and watching this on Spotify, and I'll see you again next week. So happy summer, everybody, and thanks for watching.